story is The Dinosaur's Night Before Christmas. And it's by Ann Wood and Nathan Hale is the illustrator. And The Dinosaur's Night Before Christmas. Is that a Camarasaurus or an Argentinosaurus? I don't know. Are you, you never sourced it before? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the hall not a creature was stirring. There was no sound at all. The fossils were standing where they always stood, looking out o'er a now fast asleep neighborhood. And across the wide street a small boy tucked in tight wished the museum's dinosaurs all a good night. But just as the boy was beginning to doze, an unusual clatter of noises arose. Such a racket of creaking sounds filled the boy's head that he woke with a start and he sat straight up in bed. Peering out through the window, he saw clear as day that the dinosaur fossils were starting to sway. It means they were going like this. Back and forth, the bones shook on their pins and their stands swinging necks, bending knees, outstretching their hands. And believe it or not, it was certainly true that the dinosaurs' bodies were growing anew, sprouting rainbows of colorful feathers and scales from the tops of their heads to the tips of their tails. So fantastic a scene, the boy had to see more, so he dashed down the stairs and right out his front door with no care about snow drifts that covered the street. The boy hurried across it in just his bare feet. And by luck, the boy found the museum unlocked, so he raced to the dinosaur floor. Then he stopped, for he suddenly thought, could a room full of beasts for who millions of years have had nothing to eat find a small bite-sized boy so delicious a sight that they'd forego a friendship for a sheer appetite? And just then from behind the boy came a loud hiss as a large toothy mouth seized the boy. With a kiss. A T-Rex who was wearing a wreath on his head, eating handfuls of pterosaur-shaped gingerbread. In an ambush had caught the small boy, don't you know, standing right below the dinosaur's mistletoe. With a pat on the back and a cup of eggnog, the boy helped the kind dinosaurs light their yule log, and together they joyfully danced round the fire, singing holiday songs in melodious choir. <coughs> then a band of young duckbills, all dressed up in um, holly, invited the boy with a gesture quite jolly to stand up with their heads and reach way out far and top their tall tree with a bright Christmas star. From the distance, the soft tinkling sound of sleigh bells echoed through the large hall in a, as the booming voice swelled, calling Bronto and Maya and Steggy and Packy on treetops on Raptor, on Rexy on Bracky. And cheers rang out uh, through the window appeared, Santasaurus with sleigh pulled by an eight dino deer. <laughs> Handing out gifts wrapped packages to every beast, Santasaurus swooped down and then headed due east. But the boy catching hold as the sled sailed by, hitched a ride home with Santasaur through the night sky. How would the dinosaurs fly? Landing safe in his bed on soft pillows of down, the boy waved as the Santasaur flew over town. And the Santasaur said as he sped out of sight, there's a dinosaur ball every Christmas Eve night. Shining rays from the morning sun on Christmas Day made the nighttime festivities fade fast away. But folks at the museum all wanted to know why the T-Rex was holding a sprig of mistletoe. And that's the end of this story. And there's songs in the back if you'd like to see more.
Did you guys like that story? 